here. Okay. Uh, so in the last class, we talked about the linear equations, y equals an x plus b format, and how do you write that equations? And also we talk about finding the slope and using the you know, f of x format. We looked into those questions as well. And also we looked into some graphs. Now we looked into some graphs and then find the slope and intercept and some you know, questions on how to answer those linear equations, okay? So today we'll continue from where we left off and uh, we're gonna add a little bit of the concepts as well, okay? So that way you guys can get uh, a good idea how to take care of this. Now, next one. <clears throat> Tom. Okay. So the next one is the standard format. Standard format or form, we could say. So we know the slope intercept form, right? In the last session, we looked into slope intercept form, which is y equals mx plus b. But when it comes to the standard form, ax plus by equals to c. Okay, so if you take your algebra session, you might see some questions like 2x plus 3y equal, let's say it is 6. You may see these questions like that. Or you have like y equals to 2x plus 3. Okay, so this is y equals mx plus b format, but this is standard format. Are you guys clear? This is standard format, and the other one is the y equals mx plus b format. Okay, so yeah, that's correct. Good job. Now, when you have this, so we can write it down some important rules, and it's going to tell us how to answer the questions a little faster. Okay. So let's say if I give you a question like this, and I want to find out what is the slope and what is the x intercept and what is the y intercept. So I'm going to take that question and then and then we can discuss it a little bit more further in depth. Okay. So let's say I take this question, 2x plus 3y equals 6, and I want you to find out the slope of this line, x-intercept, and then y-intercept. Okay, so we're going to find all three for the this format. And this one we already know, slope is 2, and then y-intercept is 3, and then we can find the x-intercept easily. But now, standard format, and you see these questions. So first of all, to make it easy, what I'm going to do, I'll write it at y equals mx plus b format, okay? <clears throat> so we can write this one y equals mx plus b format. Watch this one up here. So what I can write it, take the 2x to the other side. So I'm going to write 3y equal negative 2x plus 6. Everybody clear on this step? If you don't understand any step, please, you know, ask me, hey, Mr. Rama, how did you do this? Please ask me. So that way we can answer that right away, okay? Now, once we have that, what I'm gonna do, I'll divide by three. When you divide by three, you divide by three here and divide by three here, all across. Cross out, now y equal negative two thirds x plus two. Okay. Now, if I compare it slope into form, which we learned in the last class, y equals to mx plus b. Okay, you guys put it, what is the slope on the chat box? Yeah, yeah, there we go. So your slope, which is negative two thirds, and then y intercept, which is two. Good. Okay. Slope is m, which is negative two thirds. And then y intercept is two. We got that. But I want you to find the x intercept also. So, what to find the x intercept? Now, this x intercept. x intercept means imagine that, like, you know, if you have a graph, I'm finding the x intercept. x intercept means where the point is on the x axis, means y is zero. Put a y is zero. Okay. So you replace y in the zero, and then you can solve for the x. Then you can get the 
x intercept. So what I'm going to do, I'll take this equation or this equation, whichever the equation doesn't matter. So let's take this. Otherwise, I'll take this one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's correct. So I can take that first equation, which is 2x plus 3y equals 6. I'll put it at y0, this one. Okay. So if I put a y0, this becomes 0, no more. So you end up 2x equal 6, then x equal plus 2, 3, right? So the x-intercept is 3, y-intercept is 2, slope is 2 thirds. Everybody understanding this? So let me see if I can, I was looking at something. Okay. Mm. I have a question. Yeah, please. Um, is there a faster way? Yeah. With the X and Y intercepts? Mm -hmm. We're going to go over right now. Okay. Yeah, I just want to make sure the concept is clear to you first. And then we'll teach you the technique right now. Okay. So in order to understand this concept, for some reason, my extender monitor is not working. So I couldn't connect it. Okay. Now, if I look at it, just to get an idea, what I, I did talk right now. Okay. So if I take a graph in calculator and if I put a okay, still waiting. Okay, there we go. Okay, there we go. Now, if I put it this equation, y equals negative two thirds x plus two. Watch this. Y equal negative two thirds x plus two. Okay. Now watch this carefully. You see this this point? That's your y intercept, which is two. That's what we got. X intercept is this. See three zero, that three. That's what we got here. And the slope, you can see two down, three to this way. So that's the slope. Are you guys making connections between those two? Because you need to understand this. Because you know shortcuts, we can definitely apply it. But if you understand, even if you forget your you know shortcuts, you can do well on the test. Does that make sense, everybody? Good to go. All right, so that's totally good. Making sure you guys are good to go with this. So that way it makes more sense out of that. Okay, now in order to find these slopes and intercepts, there is a faster way to do these problems. Okay, so the faster way is, let's say I'm gonna give you one more question and then we can teach that uh, the speed also. I want to look at the good question, if I have any. I don't see it. OK, anyhow, so this, the faster way or the simplest rule for this one, whenever you have a standard form, the simplest form is the slope, I'm going to write it down this one here, okay? And remember this, this is the tip or technique, whatever you can call. If I have ax plus by equals to c, okay? Now your slope, slope is negative a over b. Y-intercept, c over b x-intercept, c over a. Remember these rules. This will help you so much, OK? If you remember this, you can do these questions way faster. So I'll take the same question that we did here, right? I'll take the same equation, 2x plus 3y equals 6. So equation is 2x plus 3y equals to six, right? So I want to find out slope, y-intercept, x-intercept. So I know this is A, change color. This is A, B, and C, okay? Slope, negative A over B, negative A over B, which is negative two thirds. And then y-intercept, 
c over b, that is six over three, which is two, and then x intercept c over a, which is six over two, which is three. Isn't that our answers? You see that, everybody? That is the one reason we apply these shortcuts, okay? See right here, we got the same answers without any work. I got the here, we did the work to get that answers. Here, no work, answer straight. Good, so please make sure if you have a, your have running notes or, okay, please write it down this one on your notebook. So that way it, it's kind of like the techniques will be in one place for you. Good, and this is important. Okay, so that's the first one, the first technique we got today that helps you to save some time. And also next one, before I move on to the next question, as I was looking into some of the uh, things, again, I can see this, on we put a in almost a two hours this week, really good. And thank you for adding that times out there. And I see a Bawani did it, it's almost close to two hours. And the Mihira did it almost, uh, yeah, three hours. And uh, Rablin, I'm so happy. I can see that four hours this week. Good job. And uh, Sanjana, again, almost two hours, which is good. And I see that coming up, okay? You guys are doing well. And uh, is Krishna here? Oh, he doesn't shine. Okay, so it's Christmas birthday is coming up. Okay, excellent. Anyhow, um, okay, yeah, good job, guys. Those are putting the timings because it helps you to make the right decisions. Okay, uh, it helps you, let's say, am I spending too much time on that you know, essay? Or maybe I'm spending a little time on it. So that makes you exact, you know, so you can decide what to do. Okay, okay, next. The next one, point slope formula. Point slope formula, R form. This is another important question that you normally see on the test. Okay. What is this point slope formula? In the equations, you can write, uh, let's say they give you a point. And uh, let's say right here, let's take this one back. They give you this point and they give you the slope and you can write the equation of this line, okay? We can write the equation of this line. So we'll use the same example that we had it. Okay, yep, I see that. Yeah, see somebody in, uh, on the chat box. I'm just going over the chat box. Okay. Okay, no problem. Just yeah, you can even if you you know sometimes you know it uh, takes some time to put that log in there. I know you guys are doing it, but sometimes you forget. You can just go back and then you know you can go back on the time and then date. You you know if you remember how much time you did, and put it out there and then take a picture and upload. Okay, so that that way I can see how much time you guys are able to spend on it too. Okay, now coming back to this question here. And uh, yeah, this question is really important for the test, right? Now, point slope formula, let's say if they give a point is x1, y1, and then slope is m. Okay, now equation as the rule is y minus y1 equal m times x minus x1. Okay, this is the rule. Please remember this. If you have a running note, and please uh, write it down, this one, okay? And please uh, take a note on this one. Point slope formula, y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So what I'm gonna do, and just to show you this works, I'll take that one example that we did. So I'm gonna take a point is zero two, or zero two, and then slope we already know, it's negative two thirds. 
and see if I can get that equation back, okay? So let's say the question they gave you, slope is negative two thirds, point is, uh, what is it, zero two, zero two, zero two. So the question they asked you on the test like this, write an equation, which is the line passing through the point zero two and having a slope of negative two thirds. So that's what they're asking question. And then what you do, you write it down, like you know, write it down the formula. I'll show you step by step, and then you guys can skip some of the steps as you go through. So it's formula is y minus y1 is this. So y minus y1. Y1 means this is x1, y1. You replace those numbers. Okay. Now y1 is two. Are you guys following? Any any point of time you don't understand, you lost. Please ask. Because I'll be happy if you're asking questions. I never get mad at you why you're asking a simple question. Uh, no, so I'm, that's not me. I'd rather help you. And also, when, instead of doing mistakes on the test, it's better to be doing, you know, asking questions here. Yeah, more perpendicular. Yeah, that is correct. Yeah. Yes, we're going to look into that too. Okay, so y minus y1 equals m, which is negative two thirds. x minus x1 is zero. Okay, I'll just plug it in these numbers in the formula. Now let's do the math. So it's y minus two equal negative two thirds x. Okay, now add two on both sides. y equals negative two thirds x plus two. See, isn't the same equation that we had it? Negative two thirds x plus two. If I go up, negative, where is it? There you go. Two thirds x plus two with a given point and slope. Okay. That's how you need to solve. There are a couple of ways. Again, math can be done in so many ways, uh, but you follow what you are comfortable with. Okay. And let me see if I can find a question. It's intercept is six thousand point. Let's see, I want to find a good question for this. Mm. Okay, so. Let's see, I am not looking at any good questions. I don't know why this is Okay, All right, let's try one question, okay? From a test point of view. One intercept, what is the x intercept? We'll do some practice questions now. Ara, can you please read this question for us? Yeah. Line one has a slope of three and y intercept of negative four. What's its x intercept? Mm. The line L has a slope of three. Slope is given to you, and then y intercept is given to you. And they're asking for the x intercept. Okay, let's give it a try and see. And then we can work on those the other questions as well. And I can see if I can find a good question as, as we go through. Hmm. Just give it a try. I'll explain it to you guys.
So they give you the slope and they give you the y-intercept. So take y equals an x plus b format, okay? Take y equals an x plus b format and then just find the x-intercept. X-intercept means y zero. That is the hint, okay? Let's give it a try. Just give it a try. The more you try, the better it is. Okay, that's good. That's good. Very good. <clears throat> okay, thirty more seconds. Okay, I see some answers already. That's good. Now, how about, all right, let's see. Okay, let's go over this one. So that way we should be good to go and uh, with these questions right there. All right, so what we write it first, we're going to write a y equals mx plus b format, right? So once you write the y equals mx plus b format, and, and you know, so just follow the rest of the stuff, and it should be good to go, okay? All right. Okay, so we can write it. It's a y equals to mx plus b format. Everybody pay attention here. So now replace everything that you have. So slope goes here, and then this goes here. And I can just write it down. y equal 3x, which is minus 4. Now, since you are finding the x into set, means y equals 0. So you put this 0, and you solve with x. That's all. So you add four on both sides and then divide by three, x equal four thirds. That's your x intercept. Okay, are you guys understand this one? Questions, mistakes? Oh, uh, I had one question. Yeah, please. Uh, using the formula, was it x intercept is b by a? Yeah, but it only happens, you can use it when it is a, a standard format. So if I move that into standard form, would that work? Should be. Okay, let's check it. That's a really good question. I like that when you guys ask questions I mentioned, right? Now, let's say if I put this one in a standard form, this one, okay? Now, I'm going to bring the 3x this side, okay? So then, or maybe just move the 4 the other side and then put the y this side. Okay, then it's gonna get 3x minus y equal four. Agree? Everybody agree? In a standard yes. format, I bring that four the other way and then this is minus. Now, what is the formula, Ara, for the x-intercept? Uh, C by A. Okay, okay. everybody following? This is the formula, right? C over A. So I'm gonna put that x-intercept C over A. So my C is four and then A is three. Okay. Okay. Good. Yeah. Uh, so the one for Y intercept was C divided by B, right? Mm -hmm. That's the reason I ask you guys. You have to have a little running notes. Okay. So write it down, those underlined things and highlighted things. 
have a note with you guys. And this is a good, good practice. So every week or in every class, we come up with some important things, right? And uh, sometimes if you, when, you know, if you want to go back and look at it, you know, it takes more time. And what are the important things out there? So have a notebook for everybody, you know, in case if you don't have it, have a one notebook for this, just dedicate for your SAP classes. And you don't need to write everything that I'm writing this one. But I'll tell you whenever I highlight it, hey, this is right on your notes. That you write it down. And then obviously when you're solving problems, you write it down those. And uh, um, in case if you need some like uh, uh, note taking skills on the two pages, right? Let's say if I have a book, I have a two pages. And this is what I suggest uh, we normally do. Let's say if I have a, you know, if, if you have a composition of book. Okay. So in your composition notebook, this leave it for the tips. And this you can work. Okay. So any tips or any anything that you need to formulas, you write it down here. And then all the work that you're working on, just do a scribble here. Okay. When you do this, then you have the tips that are very clear to you. That way, oh yeah, this is the tip to be used. Okay. And this is the work you can do it so that way you don't get a confusion. And also when you review for the test, you can look at all tips faster and then your brain is more you know, refreshed and you can do better on the test. Okay, so follow these simple techniques and it, it helps you in a bigger time. Okay. Next question. Mm -hmm. Okay, what is the X intercept? Same. You can follow the rule. Tell me you can apply it and see what you get. I see some answers already. Okay. Good. Yes, you can do that too. Okay. Also, you can see it's asking for x intercept. You can replace y zero and then you solve. You can get the same thing. Or if you remember the formulas, you can just apply the formula, which is way faster. You don't need to do any math in this case. And that's what we want to see. Then no math, look at the question, answer, move on. That's what you need to do. Oh, looks like everybody got this one. Very good, very good. Yes, that is correct, okay? So there are x-intercept, go back to your rules. X-intercept is C over A. Obviously, I can look at it, C is 12. C over A, 12 out of three, that is four. That's the answer. See how fast you can do these problems if you know those techniques. I don't I mean like, to show you, I wrote this equation here, I'll write it down the formula, but just, just imagine if you see this question on the test, right? All you have to do is your brain is gonna look at it. Okay, that is 12 and this is three. So 12 divided by three, four, done. Less than two seconds that they give you like almost a minute for that. And you can save a lot of time. And then that you can use it on the, the you know bigger problems out there or the word problems, okay? All right, next one. Others, can you please read this question for us? Yeah, in the XY plane, the graph of line N has an X-intercept of 2V and a Y-intercept of 
minus a b where b cannot equal zero what is the slope of line n mm. they give you the x intercept and they give you the y intercept and what could be the slope give it a try and see what you guys think I think we did this one last class too. I don't remember. I see some answers coming up. Good. Okay. If you don't know, you can write it. Okay. That's all right. It's not a big deal, but you need to study. That's all. Okay. That's okay. No problem. All right, so the next one, no, the other one, keep that one and keep this, yeah, thank you. Okay, so the, the this question right here, okay, so for the first question we have, and uh, we can see, so they gave you the x-intercept, right? X-intercept is to be, x-intercept means, y zero so that means 2b and zero y intercept means x is zero so this is zero and negative b you got the points already all we have to find the slope what's the slope formula who can tell me Amir also can tell me rise over run. excellent the rise over run and uh, also we can say vertical over horizontal and since you have points, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Agree? Now, if I use the points, so y2 minus y1, this minus this, which is negative a b, x2 minus x1. So this minus this, that's negative 2b, cross out, 4. Okay? So faster, faster, faster. To go next question Bhavani can you please read this one for us line L is perpendicular to the line described by the equation 5x plus 11y equals 16 what is the slope of line L mm. so before we go on to these lines let's talk about a little few notes about this when you have a two lines let's see if I could take these so I'm going to take another line, and I want you to observe. So I'll take another line, which is, let's say, a four. See these two lines? One is purple, and the other one is the okay? and then black color. If you see these two lines, these lines are parallel. You guys know that, right? But what do you observe in the equations? They both have the same slope. That's right, exactly. So if the lines are parallel, parallel lines, parallel lines have same slope. Remember this, okay? Parallel M1 equals M2. If they're perpendicular, And then when you multiply the slopes, 
to get negative one, or you can call negative reciprocal in mathematical terms. Okay, this is another important tips that you need to write it down. Okay. okay, now write it down that tip or whatever. That's really important. Now, can you guys tell me what is the slope of this line? Slope of this one. Remember those rules, the techniques that we have. Use them, that's faster. Okay, I'll see some. Mm -hmm, that's right. So what is the slope of that? Yeah, yeah I, I like that you write it in MX plus B format. You can write it in MX plus B format or use the techniques that I give you to you. Oh, okay. Right. Okay. Good. 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 There you go. Now, the slope is basically if I go back my rules, shortcuts, slope says negative A over B. Slope is negative A over B. So if I can say the slope is negative five over that. The slope of this line L. Slope of line L. Line L. Okay. But this one is perpendicular. Perpendicular means negative reciprocal. You're gonna be opposite and then you flip it. So perpendicular, this is this is a symbol for perpendicular line slope. It's a negative and reciprocal, negative, and then negative 11 fifths, which is 11 out of five, okay? Good to go, everyone. Questions, it's really important because in algebra is like almost like Part of algebra is like so many questions you see them. <laughs> so we want to make sure you're good to go with that. Okay. All right. Let's try more questions on this topic. Let's see if I can find one. Okay. All right, next one. All right, Tanish, can you please read this question for us? Which of the following represents the question of the line with an x-intercept of five and a y-intercept of six? Hmm. X intercept is given and Y intercept is given to you. And we have to find out the equation. Give a try and see what you guys think. Okay. Let's see some answers come popping up. Since the intercepts are given to you, you can create an order pairs out of that. And then once you get the order pairs, maybe you can the slope. Okay.
some of these questions or concepts you guys did a long time ago. And sometimes you may not remember these, but once I send the notes to you guys, go back and then read them. Because that's the only way you can retain these. Because otherwise, math is just like a rain in Phoenix. In Arizona, basically, I can say. Like, when there, it rains, it feels like it's a flooding zone. You know, they, they stop the cars, not to go through the flooding zones. And then all of a sudden, after one or two hours, and if you go back and see, and you don't feel even feel that like there is a rain. Just like math. Math, you feel like, oh, yeah, I got this, I got this, I got this. And then after an hour, if you or you know, after an hour a day, and if you ask me a question, I'm not sure. Okay? It's important. Good, good, good. I see answers out there. Socket, I don't see any answers from you. Putting the answers. Rob, also try some. Good. Okay. All right, eyes on the screen. So that way you don't miss it. Yeah, there's a lot of misconceptions there. So let's focus on this one. So first, x intercept is 5 means y is 0. So that's 5, 0. And y intercept is 6. So that means 0, 6. So you got two points, right? You can find the slope. Slope y minus y1 equals 6. And then x minus x1. That's negative 5 or negative 6 over 5. That's your slope. OK? Now, you choose one point. Doesn't matter which one you take. Remember the first equation we did, y minus y1? I'm going to write it down the formula. that. Equation, y minus y1, and x minus x1. This is the rule. You just plug it in, and we get the answer. So it's, uh, I'll take the this point. This point I'll take. Doesn't matter which one you take. Just y minus y one is five. M is negative six fifths. X minus x one is. Wait, I did something wrong. Okay. Yeah. So y one is zero, and then x one is five, right? So you can say this one is y equal. I can distribute it negative six x over five. Negative times negative is positive. Five five plus out six. Or if I look at it, I don't see anything like that. But most of them are y minus six. So it's going to be bring this one down. Six equal negative six six x. I think it's uh, six over five. C is the best answer. Okay. Good, 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 good. Okay, so next question will be a little bit of challenging one. These questions are big, big part of the question. So let's do socket. Please read this question for us. If the graph of the question is five x minus two equals five, sorry, five x minus two y equals five, and six x plus ky equals nine, or perpendicular, what is the value of k? Mm. So they're perpendicular. So it's, it's uh, so when it's perpendicular, remember the notes I gave it to you, this. This is what you need to think of. And let's see if we can find it. They're perpendicular, what's a k value? Since we know the rule on the slopes, 
maybe it's a good idea find the slopes and then we can set it up next time. Give it a try. I see some answers popping up. That's good. So page, try one more, check one more time. It's a small mistake. Yeah, there you go. That's better. Good. Okay, no problem. Okay, no stress. Yeah, if you don't know it, just you can, you know, you try and then if you don't know it, that's fine, we can try. You can write it, I don't know, or IDK, I'm not sure, whatever, on the on the chat. So that way I can see how many of you guys are good to go, how many of you guys are struggling, but give it a try. Okay, yeah, okay. At least you try, guys. That is important, okay? It's uh, whether you get a right answer or wrong answer. That little try, it's important. Just like soccer, whenever you play soccer, you know, or you're driving, if you don't drive, you know, you don't feel it and you don't know exactly what's going on. But once you drive a little bit at the beginning, it's going to be difficult. But once you are a little bit perfect, then it should be good to go. Same thing. So, yeah, try it, okay? All right, eyes on the screen. Let's go over this one quickly so you can get an idea. So first thing, I think I can, I'm gonna use it, since they're perpendicular, I'll use my rule with the slope. So let's find out the slope for the first one. What's the slope of this one? One of you guys use the rule, I'm on like the techniques that we gave it to you. What's the slope? I got five over two. Five over two. Okay, so that's the five over two. How about this one? What you guys get? Same. Mm -hmm. Same like Negative. this. Yeah, go ahead. Negative six over k. Negative six over k. Thank you. So when you don't, when you know these, there are so.
So when you know, when we get these two, the slopes, and one thing we know, they're negative reciprocals. That means when you multiply those two, you get negative. Or you can set up negative reciprocals. Let's say if I write it pi over two, and the other one is going to be negative reciprocal. You're going to flip it and then change the sign. So that means it's going to be k over six. Everybody understand? Did everybody understand how I write it k over six? It's a negative reciprocal. It's opposite and then flip. And you just solve it. And then, you know, two goes in three times, cross multiply it. It's a 15 equals k. That's it. Done. You know? Good to go. So, you know, learning the topic is one thing, applying it is a different thing. So we need to know how to apply these things because that's what the SAP is all about. They don't ask straight direct question. Okay, what is the, write an equation for the perpendicular line like that. They always ask these type of questions. So we should be good to go with them. Okay. Oh, wow, it's a lot of time already. So uh, what I'm going to do, let's see. Mm, okay, so let's take a little break. So that way it's, uh, we can continue the next, okay? Okay, and also we talk about the word in context questions. And it's really important to look at what context are we talking about? Okay, so those we discussed in the last week too, and also we looked into some question, what is that meaning in that context? Or some questions like this word nearly means, so those questions, and also we discussed a tone and attitude, what kind of tone, okay? And uh, whenever you answer those questions, remember that you have to kind of like go over the, what is the overall tone, okay? That is matching with your individual paragraph tone. So that's another important thing we did. And uh, what else? Yeah, and also we talk about like what is the different types of tones. We talk about that, and uh, also we talk about evidence. Okay, when it comes to the evidence questions, you know, how literal evidence. You know, you know you've got to be very clear and direct evidence, and the quantitative evidence. And quantitative evidence is basically they can kind of like give you graphs, tables, diagrams. All those things can be on the quantitative. Evidence, okay. Good. So today we're going to look into the evidence type of questions, but we're going to understand when it is a given a picture and how do we take care or how do we read the data from it. Okay. So because you will see the uh, passages with the information on it. Okay. So let me see if I can put some information and then we can talk about it more. On this, uh, let's see. Let's see. I'm gonna make a little bigger. Okay, I want you to guys uh, look at this picture that I put them on the screen. Uh, it's picture in the sense is like, and we have a passage, ba passage based on this one, or no, a story based on this one. So I want you guys to look at it carefully and see what you see. And, uh, and then we can read the story on it. Okay. And then we can work together. Uh, what can we do? In the car. Okay, so look at this one. Make sure you guys are reading the uh, picture carefully. Whenever they have a you know pictures are given to you, read these. Okay, so read the timelines and what you have right here, how many family tree, and uh, millions of years of ago, starting from zero. 0.5, 1, 1.5, yeah. And then family history goes this, goes to here, 
and that goes to this and goes to this and goes to this like that. Okay. So now you have an idea, like a picture. And now what we're going to do, we're going to kind of like go um, read it and, and then we can go over um, questions on this one. Okay. So how about let's do it this one reading together and then and I'll give you guys to answer these questions as well. Okay. So let's see. <clears throat> Let's take a quick turns and uh, read the passes as well. Uh, let's see. Any volunteers to start with reading? Okay. All right. Before this one, I want to put something about this passage as well. Okay. So this this uh, basically this passage is based on the 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 evolution or evolution of the human intelligence. Okay, so that's what we're basically looking into it. All right, guys. So let's see who wants to start reading. I don't see any hands out there. So okay, there you go. Yes, Mehra, thank you. Please go ahead and read this. We are a bright species. We have gone into space and walked on the moon. Yet, you would never have guessed that if you traveled back to between 100,000 and 40,000 years ago, at that time, our Homo sapien ancestors and Neanderthals coexisted. Neanderthals were like us, but physically stronger, with large bones and teeth, protruding brows and face, and hardly a chin. Perhaps what we lacked in brawn, we made up for in. Okay, excellent. And uh, next, anybody else? Let's see. Can see because my this one is not there. Okay, excellent. Any volunteer? Next one. Okay, I see somebody on the chat. Yes, next one, please. Wait, I forgot where we were. Uh, Are we on the yeah, from she ended up to this and then continued from there. But for the most of our history, our species was not was not bright enough to act very differently from the Netherlands, let alone be more successful than they were. Only around four, 40,000 to 32,000 years ago, in Western Asia and Europe, the Netherland people disappeared to be replaced by our species. Hmm. Okay, next volunteer. Yeah. Yep, go ahead. Yes. Why, why, why did we coexist with the Neanderthals for 60,000 years, a far longer case of homage? hominids living side by side than any other in human history and why did we eventually win out brains alone cannot provide the answers as the neanderthals may in fact have the larger ones per perhaps they lack the, the long vocal chambers needed for speech equals equal certainty exists among those who study the base okay all right any other Come on, come on, come on, come on. I don't want to call. I mean, I can call, but again, I, I don't want to call. Just come on, you will try, everybody. All right, who wants it? Next. All right, I'll, I'll call. All right, Sanjana, we'll read up to this one here. Of their skulls that they did and that they did not if they did lack one then this could be the explanation but maybe not since even without a voice box gestures can communicate as can be seen among the deaf indeed hunters find advantages in using sign language speech sounds would 
warn off potential prey, and not just while hunting, but in everyday life. Anthropologists find that hunter-gatherers use sophisticated sign languages to complement their speech. Sign language might even have other advantages. Evidence even suggests that it is easier to learn than speech. Deaf children start to pick up signs earlier than hearing ones learn to speak. So spoken speech is not in all ways superior to sign speech. It is not something that can be explained or our replacement of the nin thridals. Okay, excellent, thank you. And then last paragraph and somebody else. Bhavani, can you please read this one? Are you reading? I can't hear you. Okay, can you check your mic one more time? See if that works. All right, Ara, could you please pick it up there from there? Sure. The okay. reason we anatomically modern humans want out lies, we suspect not being brighter or better to speak, but in our very physical frailty and our resulting need to exploit our minds. Neanderthals stronger than us did not need to take this route. They could survive with their physical strength rather than tapping the potential of their brains. An analogy is with countries. The richest ones such as Switzerland, Finland, Singapore, and Japan are not blessed with, but rather lack natural resources. Mm. Without them, they, they have been forced to use their brains to innovate, providing products and services ranging from cell phones to diplomacy. Right. Awesome. So if you look at it, and obviously this passage, and uh, it's all based on the this picture right here. Okay, so when when you read these passages, you can always kind of like, you know, when at any time they give you these type of questions or this type of passages, sometimes you may see pictures, sometimes you may see some tables, sometimes maybe some data is given to you. And then the passages basically go back and forth and then enhance or some you know pick up some questions or points from the graph as well okay so now you saw read the passage all together kind of like that now we can answer some of these questions and what type of questions they can ask you on this passage and then and how can we answer those type of questions and so that way it makes uh, more sense for us to and then answer those as well okay so what we're going to do right now so let's go ahead and then since we read the first read you know it, it since it is a beginning you know we're still focusing on them learning some of these uh, reading passages so it's okay we can read a couple of times and go slowly then we're going to speak up the speed and then do mistakes so so see you guys did the first read already now what i'm going to do i'm going to give you the same passage as a Google format, and I want you to you guys to try this and uh, answer those questions, and then we can go over the answers and we can see you know, what is the you know, how do we answer those things, and uh, you know it makes more sense as we go through. Okay, so let me see. I can copy and chat for everybody. Okay, so there you go. I put it, a link in the chat box. It's a, uh, uh, what do you call it? Whatever, Google Forms. So go ahead and then we read the passage already. You have some little bit of idea. Now you can read it one more time and then answer those uh, questions. I think it's eight questions or something like that. So answer those questions and then we can discuss these questions also. If you have a time, maybe we can do it today. If you don't have a time, we can do it in the next week. So that way you, know, you get a good idea on this one. So, and then two more concepts that we need to do in the reading and then we'll jump back into the writing part. So that way, also we have an entire thing is really going well and make sure you guys are doing the work on the 
portal as well. Okay. So what about, let's see how many questions on this one. We have close to eight, nine questions. So let's take a 15 minutes, okay? 15 minutes for this. Let's see, 15 minutes timer. Yeah, I'm gonna leave this one here. Uh, you can just minimize the screen and then just work on that one. Yeah, I'll be quiet.